Hey everyone, everything we consume, food, drink, content, every choice we make is either feeding the beast or the bit. Intrigued? Good. If you get bumped and inspired by this episode, then I've done my job. Please enjoy episode 20 of the Ministry of Freedom Show. Ready to roll? I'm ready. You ready? Ready. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to episode 20 of the Ministry of Freedom show. Bruce Coddington. That's me. Jim Motes. I got up super early this morning, even like abnormally early for me. Kind of rewrote this show. Okay. I'm good with that. So I was like, you know, it's pretty good. I, I feel good about what I'm saying, but I, I couldn't. I just couldn't. <laughs> so I'm like, dang it. I had a dang it moment. It happens. Where you just sit there, you're like. Dang it. So, um, so okay, I added okay. some stuff and eh, we'll see where it goes. So everyone, if you're a part of the tribe and the show's providing value, support the show. We've talked about supporting the show. It's important, right? Check out the website. Most importantly, ministryoffreedom.show. Pick up some merch with uh, how much is shipping, Bruce? I hear it's free. It's free. Okay. It's zero. Uh, share the show, subscribe, engage with us. All that stuff matters. Uh, Instagrams <laughs> at Real Jim Motes at Ministry of Freedom Show. Bruce still does not have one. That's not just his kids. <laughs> so it is what it is. Uh, yeah. So a couple things. Um, and you and I haven't talked about this. I haven't seen you since we were doing this last week. Right. Um, so the book. Oh yeah. Book's done. The book's done. Book's done. It's, it's done because I stopped jacking with it. Oh yeah. So every you day it. I'm jacking with it. So right. it's done. So I've been shopping for publishers and things and how does that process work? And again, just like the show, I just decided, Hey, I know nothing about this. So let's do this. Okay. So it's been interesting. I found the one. Really? I think so. Now I've kind of courted them and had the meeting and sold myself on them. And here's what I do. And here's who I am. And yeah. here's the book. And so now it's to their editing team and they're going to let me know. I'm like, Oh. Okay. Really? Yeah, I thought it was just, hey, I've chosen you and do my book. Yeah, here's some money. It's not how it goes. Oh. I said, hey, what do I owe you? They said, well, nothing. We, we, we haven't agreed to this yet. I went, oh, <laughs> okay. I said, so the table's kind of turned. So now you're going to just get with me. If you want a date, you'll call me. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. So, what a great sales tactic. The other thing that you'll find kind of funny is, so I'm not super tech savvy. I use my Mac, my MacBook, and, and it's in pages, and I'm doing mm -hmm. a book. And I kind of got some advice from Mr. Google about how to format books and how publishers like it and stuff. So she says, do you, you have that in Word? I go, no, it's in pages. She says, oh, pages. She says, you have Word, though, on your Mac, right? No. <laughs> she says can you get word on your mac and we can do I, I said oh yeah of course so honestly i'm thinking no idea what you're saying <laughs> bruce <laughs> so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it pages has export to word um i think she said those words okay <laughs> It was super funny when I walked in. So I walk in, our meeting's at 10. I get there, you know, 10 minutes early. And, and uh, so I walk in and she kind of walks up and she says, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'm Jim. She goes, okay. <laughs> I said, we have a, a meeting at 10. She goes, oh, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. It's been a morning. I'm like, dang, this is off to the wrong She's like, okay. Yeah. But anyway, so there's progress there. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully we have some more cool stuff for the website. And that'll be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Ready for some scripture? Oh, for sure. Let's, let's get some Jesus and some fitness in our lives today. Kind of my two things. First Corinthians. Things. I do. Those are my two things. First Corinthians 9.27. And I have two different versions, um, translations here. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. The message translation is pretty cool. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else about it, and then missing out myself. I love that scripture. I uh, found a good commentary on it from a place called scripturesavvy.com which is a really good resource. I've never uh, heard of it. I, I kind of went down the rabbit hole and there's a lot of good stuff there. 
So here's the commentary from Scripture Savvy. In this verse, Paul speaks of the importance of self-discipline and self-control in his own life. He recognizes the need to keep his own body in check and focused on serving God. This verse serves as a personal example of how taking care of our bodies can directly impact our ability to fulfill our calling. As Christians, our actions should align with our beliefs. This verse reminds us that if we fail to exercise exercise self-discipline and self-control, we risk disqualifying ourselves from being effective witnesses for Christ. It challenges us to actively pursue a disciplined life, both physically and spiritually. It's pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Um, You know what? I told you I changed the show up this morning and kind of rewrote it. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to jack up the order I have these things in. (laughs) This scripture and that commentary talks about uh, self-discipline, self-control. So the word self is in there a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, So... There's a dude, I don't think this is secret stuff because it's in the open world Facebook comments. Uh, there's a dude who follows a show. His name's Rick. Um, I've never met Rick, but um, I used to know his wife and they're Christian people and I appreciate their, you know, they're following the show and everything. But so he reached out to me the other day. And so I'm going to read some of the comments and I'm not going to, not even ask necessarily opinion. I just want the audience to kind of see different sides of this because Self-control, self-discipline, the word self's in there. And there are some people, especially Christian people that don't like self, you know, not uh, Mm self stuff is is dangerous. So I saw that he sent me this question and I knew it was kind of a loaded question. What do you think of the self-help industry? So I thought, okay, here we go. Let's just do it. (laughs) All right, let's go. Normally I'd be like, you know, I'm busy or whatever. Okay. So my response I think there's value in a lot of different resources. Self-help will only take us so far, but for those who don't yet know Christ, it can be a great starting point. My mission is to lead people to Jesus through a process of personal development and life optimization. Great question, dude. Thought I answered it. Let's move on. But wait, there's more. His response I think the self-help industry is destroying what Jesus wants to accomplish in us. He said, deny yourself. He also said, abide in me, which means completely trusting in him for everything. As believers, I think he mistyped this. As believers is to, oh, our job as believers is to point people to the source of life, which is Jesus. We either eat from the tree of life or we're eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Tree of life is trusting him. The other tree is independence of God. I remind you that good is on the same tree. So even if self-help is good, it's on the other tree. Couldn't let it go. (laughs) So my reply, I don't disagree. But that mindset has kept a lot of people from getting off their butts and making things happen. It's one of the reasons so many Christian men are ineffective and physically weak, which I believe lessens their impact in the kingdom. But I love and appreciate your perspective, brother. I thought that's, you know, I'm being pretty decent there. And, you know, he makes some good points. He responds. I disagree with you. It's not just a mindset, and my statement has nothing to do with being lazy. I would like to point out one more thing. You made a statement on this week's podcast about everything with Jesus is hard. I think that's taking some liberty about what I said. I used this to reference the scripture of, in this world, you will have trouble. Yep. Um, that simply is not true if you're actually abiding in him. Jesus said, come to me, all who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Self-effort is hard because you and your own strength. I'm not trying to wave a stick at you or what you're trying to do. We're either doing things in our own power from the self life, or we are in Christ drawing from his power. And then he asked me what my interpretation is of, of a certain scripture. Um, My final comment. And then I was, I was done. I strive to tap into God's power within me to be able to push harder and farther than I could on my own strength. Perhaps there's value in your approach and interpretation of those scriptures and your approach to improving, but there's equal value in mine. As men of the way, Christian men, we benefit more 
as do our people, from focusing on our commonalities more than splitting hairs and how we arrive at the finish line. Mm. Gotta go, bro. That's how I ended it up. And I think there's value in what he says, and it, it, it can spark a discussion, but why the division? Why do we need to have that? Um, and I think this commentary really speaks to that. We have an obligation as Christian people to take the scriptures like that and, and build ourselves up because it improves our witness. In other words, if we're not improving, other people aren't going to be attracted to us. We won't have that strong aroma of Christ on us that we want people to look at us and be like, I kind of want that guy's life. What's different about him? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's different about me is, hey, I'm a Christian. Let me talk to you about that. But I do know this. Get ready to be bumped, Christian traditionalist. Jesus ain't coming to my house and getting me fit. He's just not. Now, can he equip me? Can he empower me? Can he provide that power of the Holy Spirit and help me be more disciplined and all those things? I believe that's true and I believe I live it. I've accomplished a lot of things because of the power that I have from believing in Christ. But we've got to paddle and pray. If you're stuck out in the middle of the ocean, you have nowhere to go, you can't see land anywhere, what are you going to do? Paddle or pray? You better freaking do both. Mm -hmm. Pray for which direction to start paddling, but you better pick up the oars. And I think people miss that. They just want to sit back in the boat and be like, at some point, I'm going to get rescued. If I pray hard enough, I'm going to get rescued. Maybe. But I think God wants us to paddle. So there's that. Thoughts? Uh, it just it reminds me of that uh, joke of the person uh, being in, uh, flooded. Or the, I don't know if it's a joke oh, I know or a story. The, the, the roof? Yeah, they're on Go. top of the roof. And uh uh, 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 boats come by and say, Hey, do you want to ride? And, and no, no, God's going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. Helicopter comes by. You want to ride? No, God's mm -hmm. going to take care of me. And then start saying, God, why aren't you there? And he's like, I, I sent you a boat. And then yeah. Yeah. Such a guy boats. ends up dying, goes to heaven. He <laughs> yeah. says, God, why didn't you rescue me? Um, did you see the helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> so, right. right. Yeah. It's, it's good. And there's <laughs> wisdom in that, man. I, I think so too. So we're a couple months in to the new year. The year we've committed to the all out life. That's my theme for the year. So um, go back to episode 12 if you need a refresher. That was the all out life show. Episode 12. That's it's just crazy. 12 is a good one. Um, <laughs> and where are we at now? 20? Yeah, this is the 20th. Dude, it's flying, man. <laughs> so all of us have had some struggles and some may have even completely given up and fallen off. By the way, I'm going to stop. Just looking at your face is what you look entirely different than you did two months ago. I know you hate that stuff and I'm not going to ask you how much weight you lost or any of that, but man, kudos and good on you because I know you're working hard and it freaking Ugh. shows, man. You look great and especially great in the Ministry of Freedom hoodie, right? It's a little tight fitting. Should be. Remember? I know. You, you need an stuff. unnecessary stocking cap and you need a shirt that's too tight. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, but if you've fallen off, this is a reminder to accept some grace, put the shovel down and stop digging the hole. It's time to get back on track and recommit to the mission of becoming the optimized version of yourself. So it's important for people, especially right now, a lot of people, I mean, we're into, when will this come out? Late February, mm -hmm. early March. I mean, so we're, we're into it. So forgive yourself for being weak. Get over it and move forward with us. Now, if you're of the few who are still dialed in and getting more fit every day, kind of like you, good. And for you, it's time to ramp up even more. Oh, man. Adjust your goals a little bit higher. So at the beginning of any transformative process, it's kind of new and exciting. First three weeks are great, aren't they? Yeah. Did you experience that? I did. Like with the deaf reset, I was like, oh, I'm into this. This First is month was, yeah, yeah. Until, until it started hurting. Yeah. But then recovery and then now workouts are yeah. uh, just as fun. Yeah. And I, I got to, I think you're going to like, I love that you don't know what I'm talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> so at the beginning of the process, it's new and exciting and it's pretty easy to stay on track. But as time goes on, kind of the only reality that we feel is the sucky part, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The only reality we're living in, starting Obviously, in like the first thing two, I brought up. Is, yep. The reality is it's, it's hard. The pain and it does hurt, right? And what about the deprivation? Feels good. Deprivation though. gets pretty freaking tiring, mm -hmm. right? Like that first month, I didn't have any sweets. So, uh, the last two days, I, I cheated a little bit, but we won't me get too. into that. Jacks me all up. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So there's physical and emotional pain to that. It becomes way less fun. And we sometimes revert back to our addicted to comfort selves. We are addicted to comfort. I mm-hmm. believe it's the most, the, the worst addiction in our country. You talk about fentanyl and meth and whatever else. For the masses, comfort is the worst addiction. So we get back to being weak, soft, fat, depressed, ineffective. So what's happened? Uh, quite simply, I think we forgot that every choice that we make, and I'm going to pose this kind of point and maybe even a question to you. Every choice we make, so food, drink, what time we go to bed, the content we consume, who we spend time with, our training, literally every choice is either feeding the beast or the bitch, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So I said bitch, and it's a Christian show, and okay, it's not misogynistic. To me, it's not a gender-specific term when when I use it. It, To me, it means it refers to our weakest, the weakest default versions of ourself. So our weakest, most addicted to comfort, laziest, sit there with the remote control, that's that's the bitch. Mm -hmm. And everything that we're consuming is feeding the beast, which is who we're going to become, or that bitch, right? You agree? Is it, can it be true? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And if there's, I mean, if you can think of one that doesn't, so everything's helping you improve or taking you away from it. There's rarely a neutral decision. Right. Well, laying on the couch for an hour and watching Netflix is neutral. No, it's really not. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that we're not going to do that sometimes. So there's some nuance in here. So since we've defined, I told you what the bitch is, let's define the beast. The beast is going to look different for each of us, but I think it's important for everyone to visualize what the beast is for them. What, what is that person for you? So the beast for a you know, 19-year-old college wrestler is probably going to be a different version than my beast. Okay. Right? Yeah. And or mine. Right. Uh, maybe it's not, but for me it is. So you visualize your highest self to get that picture. For me, the beast is a dude who is adding muscle, becoming more conditioned and confident, uh, building wealth, drawing closer to Christ, uh, increasing my level of impact that I have on others. That, that's what, who my beast is. So I understand that every choice that I make is either getting me closer to that man, becoming that man, or it's taking me further away. So the idea is obviously to stack way more that are getting you closer. So if you take 10 steps towards the beast and one step towards your bitch, you're still nine to the good. And so we, we get how that works. Right. When we have a cheat day, we enjoy the birthday cake at the office party. We have a few beers on date night. We skip a few days of training because we're tired. It, it, it's not, those aren't catastrophic things. But inarguably, it prolongs what, now follow me here because I kind of, this is a term that I've been working on. And it prolongs what I call our suck cycle. Okay. So the suck cycle starts right after that newness wears off. So you're, you're brand new. And so we talked about it, it's three weeks. Is it four weeks or whatever? Mm-hmm. So the suck cycle starts when that wears off and the monotony and the pain settles in. It's kind of around week four, right up until we start seeing and feeling tangible results. And here's what's important. I think we discount it. It's also the time when others are noticing and com- commenting on it as well. Mm-hmm. So that makes us feel pretty good. And it helps get us out of the suck cycle because like, hey, that, you know, I haven't seen that guy in a couple months. And he's like, oh, look at you. You put on a little muscle and you're kind of like, hey, look at me. (laughs) So it feels good. Mm -hmm. The suck cycle is kind of like basic training in the military. That first 10 weeks or so, it's a time when all you know is pain and deprivation, right? That it sucks. That's the suck cycle of the military. Okay. So you're cut off totally from your former way of life. You're solely focused on getting through it, getting trained up uh, in the art and focus and discipline, preparing for the next phase where you'll reap the benefits. So the suck cycle transitions into a more sustainable lifestyle that's continuing on your trajectory towards the beast, but it isn't that accelerated, I really have to be dialed in, that sucky part. After basic training, you're still in the military and you're still learning, you're still growing, but you've got the basics down and now you lead a different life. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the Andy Elliott, it takes a hundred days to change yourself. Yeah. Yes. Same that. That's the suck cycle. Yeah. Right. I would. Yeah. Okay. Now I I see what you're saying. Where it takes actual effort to stay disciplined. Yeah. 
And it's not just, a, it's not reflexive. Yeah. And you haven't earned in your suck cycle. So you've been at basic for eight days and it's kind of sucked and you haven't got a lot of sleep and they're waking you up with a trash can in the morning and you got yelling at you and everything. On day eight, you're not like, hey, I'm going to take a week and go to Aruba. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. You're in the suck cycle. Let me illustrate another reason to stop wavering in the suck cycle. And this is especially important for us dudes in our 50s. Boomers. Gen X. Correct. So follow me here because I'm going to get a little bit in the weeds. Okay. But it makes real sense in my head. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing can go wrong. Can't. (laughs) Let's say that the beast for you, so your optimized self, let's call it level nine. Okay. Okay. That's where you can attain. If you prolong your suck cycle, in other words, you're cheating, you're getting it. So you're prolonging it. So it's way longer than like you, you keep, you keep getting rolled back in basic Mm -hmm. and you're there a year. When you, when you prolong your suck cycle, the maximum potential lessons Because there's a limit to how high we can go in regards to our higher self. So if our suck cycle that should have taken 90 days is now six months because we deserved the beer and the cake, that beast level is going to lower to maybe a seven. So not only have we allowed a few cheats and laziness to extend that suck cycle in pain, we've agreed that our beast potential is not as high as it could have been had we been disciplined through the process. So we've made an exchange that essentially it kind of goes like this. I wanted three beers one night. I was tired and sore, so I didn't train for three days. I binged a show on Sunday instead of training, reading, spending quality time with my family. I was at the birthday party. I had to have the cake. I've decided to extend my suck cycle by eight weeks and lessen my beast potential by one down to a level eight. So those choices are, are important. In other words, I'll put it in the, in the military perspective. If you keep getting rolled back and it takes you nine months to get through basic training, you're not going to be, the potential that you have to be the best soldier has lessened. You're not going to be an elite warrior mm-hmm. because you've decided to make decisions that have made it so difficult for you in your suck cycle. You're going to be a freaking clerk because your potential has lessened from the choices you've made in that nine months. So these seemingly insignificant compromises actually have lifelong ramifications because your maximum effort or your maximum has now been lessened. So we ask ourselves, was the exchange worth it? You ever made a a willful exchange in this and then thought afterwards, that just wasn't worth it. I've never had three donuts and thought later that day. That was great. That was worth it. That was, I would go back and do that again. In fact, I wish I had three more. (laughs) <laughs> it's just rare that that happens. If we let ourselves become fat, sick, tired, and ineffective, we don't have the luxury of cheat days and a few beers on Friday night. It's just the way it is. You got to that point by putting poison in your face, so you need to stop ingest- injecting poison. Telling yourself you deserve it is the most destructive lie ever told. You ever do that, Bruce? Bruce? Every single day. Yeah. I deserve that. Right? I mean, I worked hard all week. I deserve to... Actually, I'm more of a... I just need it. Oh. I just need that right now. Hmm. Something I need. I'm, I'm working on a problem. A little boost of I get from that sugar. Yeah. It just it gets me back. It's, yeah. a, it's more of a mental thing. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I've I, I had that was my thing yeah. while I was writing code yeah. for so many times. Yeah. Just to, that yeah. one little extra boost, yeah. a little dopamine hit. And you've agreed that, yeah, I know this is hurting me physically, but right now what's most important is getting this code written. I'll worry about the physical stuff later. I'll make that up on the other end. You never do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get There's made no up on the up. other end. It's just starting over. Yep. So would the person that you're striving to become make those exchanges? That's the question for me. And I know, obviously, it's a rhetorical question, but mm-hmm. I mean, I know the answer, right? If the target, if the sole target is writing code, though, and spending endless hours doing it, you're making the right decision. Maybe. You know what? I, I, I but, would tell you that the, just like a beer, the hangover, that the, there is a sugar hangover. For sure. And, and it's more immediate. Yeah. It's, all, it's, it's like an instant crash. It's like an hour later. Yeah. So you get that half an hour. And then instead of being able to pummel through three hours... 
I can only do it one. Yeah. Because then I'm just kind of dragged down. Man, that's true. It's still difficult to make that right decision sometimes when there's a cookie in front of you. Yep. I struggled with it this week. <laughs> Me too. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that, and, and we always tell ourselves a reason that we do it better than other people. I'm better than other people. <laughs> like there's a bowl full of Oreos in the pantry. Well, I only had two. <laughs> a lot of people eat freaking 30. So I'm good because I had two. What's the right number of Oreos I should have in a day? 14. So it's zero. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, ne I the next test is going to be open book. <laughs> but right. I mean, yeah, right. But the, it is zero. Oh, yeah. Because they're just sugar bombs. If we're serious on becoming the beast, and especially if we're in our suck cycle, if we're in basic training, there aren't cheat days. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Yeah. You didn't get here for no reason. We've got to totally transform that guy. Right. We have to make different decisions. Mm -hmm. It's difficult, though. And that's probably why it's called 75 hard and not 28 hard. Man. So I've been really focused on that because it's coming up quicker than I think. And I have been doing a few two a days. OK. 75 of those in a row, I have to be honest, seems insurmountable. Mm -hmm. But I know people do it. And what one man can do, another can do. Right. I remember. So I've asked you before, do you know how to tell if somebody's ever run a marathon? Don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> so, when I, just like a vegan. Yes. When I ran the marathon, I remember looking at the training plan and seeing like it's 16 weeks long. And, you know, you get to you look ahead to like week 12 and on Sunday it's 18 miles. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do that. And I was right. But then I looked back at week one and the longest run was four miles. I ran four miles. Mm -hmm. I can. So I can do that. I don't need to worry about week 12. Right. I need to worry about the next training run and making decisions that are going to help me accomplish that. Same thing with 75 hard. I don't know that I can do 75 days in a row. You know what? Good news. I don't need to. I need to do one. Mm -hmm. Can I do one day of two a days and be dialed in and take my underwear pick and not drink alcohol and I can and drink my water, all the things that go into it. I can do that for a day. Mm -hmm. But if we think we have to do it for 75 days, yeah. Right. I'm going to do it. The meat of the, of the I'm talk. I'm saying I'm going to do it. Well, I don't have that self-confidence yet. I'm going to give it a shot. Well, I'm going to do it. All right. And I might mess it up and have to start again. So the suck cycle might get prolonged. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. To me, it's kind of life affirming. It's, it's a big deal. Yeah. So the meat of this talk, all of the stuff I, that I'm putting together... It's, it comes from a long talk and session that I had with a friend. And it's a friend that I'm, that I'm kind of coaching in his process of living on the path. So this is a little bit new for me. And I've taken this guy, I don't want to say under my wing. I, he's a friend mm -hmm. and, and I have a lot of respect for him. And he's a guy that really needs to make some life change. And he's been open and transparent with me. And I, I told him I, I didn't tell him I would out him on the show, so I won't, but we'll yeah. talk later. Um, but anyway, solid dude, and he's... I think I know who it is just by he, your describing He's him. significantly heavy mm -hmm. and knows that he needs, it's time to start making some life change. And, and I said, dude, how about this? I'm 100% available every single day for as long as it takes, and I'll just do it for you. We'll do it together. You're not in this alone. I will help you. And so he's super open to that, and it's been pretty rewarding for me. So that's where a lot of the talk comes from. Yesterday, I was talking with him about we need to get in the habit of, and I'm stealing a Greg Anderson line here, we need to microdose adversity. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to him about the two-a-days, and I said, and the other, the other day I did a two-a-day in my afternoon. I did a little bit of running on the treadmill to break a sweat. Then I put on my cold weather gear, like the stuff I would wear to the Chiefs game, like the uh, compression thing. I put that stuff on, then got in the sauna. Okay which was absurd. <laughs> he says, why? Why would you do that? I said, great question. So we won't speak to my mental health or anything because it seems pretty crazy to do. <laughs> but I said, I need to microdose adversity. I need to force myself to be extra uncomfortable. And here's why. If I can sit in that sauna for 45 minutes or an hour with a hoodie on and compression gear and everything else, 
when I go out this summer and I want to do two hours at Flanagan when it's 110 degrees, it's no factor mm -hmm. because I've already been through that adversity. It, I need to force myself into discomfort so I'm stronger when the day comes. We can't have that be the first day we've experienced it. I was speaking with uh, a, a guy yesterday and we were talking about life things and some stuff that we've both been going through. And, and he says, yeah, I know you've been going through a lot with such and such. And, you know, I'm just making sure you're okay. I, I said, dude, I'm, I'm solid. I said, it's, this stuff's no factor. And that's another, that's a Jocko line I keep using in my life. It's no factor. He says, what do you mean? I said, well, I'll put it to you like this. If I walked up and punched you in the face and you've never been hit before, it's going to stun you and freak you out. And you might even knock you down. And you're certainly going to be disoriented because you, you not, you're not experienced with that adversity. But if you're a guy that spars four or five times a week and I walk up and hit you with everything I have, you're going to laugh. <laughs> right. You're going to swat me across the cheek and ask me to leave as you're smiling and laughing out loud at me because I didn't even phase you. My punch is no factor. It's not because my punch is any different in the two scenarios. It's because you're so used to that adversity that it's no factor when it happens to you in the real world. And I said, so I've been through a lot of punches, so they're no factor at this point. I just kind of, let's go. This is, this is nothing new for me. So I think it's important to put ourselves in those un uncomfortable situations so we can be uncomfortable in the real world. And we'll talk about real world discomfort and why we might need that as we move on. This particular dude, he says, now keep in mind, he's got about 150 more pounds to lose. Okay. And he's been at it since January 1st. Mm -hmm. So he's lost pretty significant weight. As at the time of the taping, he's down 20 pounds. By the time this comes out, it's, it's probably going to be 30. Great. So he's doing great. Yeah. And he looks different. And, and, yeah. just, and a lot of it's how he carries himself and his countenance is different. It's just, it's just really fun to watch him come alive. I, I just really enjoy spending time with this guy. But he says to me, he says, you know, I, I'm thinking I, I, I have to make a decision about Sturgis this summer. I said, isn't that decision already made? No, you know, I got to think about it. And, 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 you know, I said, bro. You ain't going to Sturgis. <laughs> is Sturgis going to help you get where you're trying to go? Or is it going to prolong your suck cycle? Well, I mean, you know, probably going to do a little drinking up there and the food won't be good. I said, well, how much training are you going to get in at Sturgis? Well, none. And I said, if you're serious, that decision's already been made. Once your standard is set and your goals are in stone, the decisions have already been made. You don't have to think anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. Yeah, you know, you're probably right. And I'm not sure. I said, you still aren't committing, man. I said to him, I, I said, how long were you going to go for? Four days. I said, okay, let's do this then. Don't go. Take those four days off from work. Do two a day workouts. Dial in your fitness. Be outside in the sun because it's in like early August. Mm -hmm. Take those four days and read do your studies, get a lot of exercise in, some good sun. At the end of that four days, you're going to get so much closer to the beast. Then he says, yeah, but be honest, Jim, I really don't know if I can afford to miss that much work. Taking those four days, I said, hold on. You could to go to Sturgis, though. <laughs> we just agreed you're going to miss four days of work to go there, but you can't miss four days to, to dial in. He says, wow. I said, yeah, man, it's up here. That's where the battle is. Mm -hmm. The battle isn't anywhere else than between your ears. And we have to get to a point where we need to take a certain amount of time, especially when there's a lot of work to do and not compromise. This isn't the year I'm going to Sturgis. I'm not doing this this year. I'm not doing this. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go be a stoic for 12 months. I'm going to handle my family business and my professional business. Other than that, people aren't going to see me. Mm -hmm. I'm checking out. I'm going to go become the beast. Then I'm going to kind of get myself back into society a little bit and make better decisions. And people are going to know I'm the beast and they won't ask me to do stupid stuff anymore. <laughs> but it was a really good talk and he's open to it. And it's such a great example of the struggles that we all have in our own heads. I can't miss work for four days to do th some things that are going to be positive, but I can miss four days of work because I deserve to go to Sturgis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I posed this question to him. I said, let me ask you this, man, not to beat you up or anything, 
but look at you. Look at the decisions you've made over the years that have gotten you to that guy that's sitting across from me. Look at yourself. Are you telling me that guy deserves some kind of reward? Hmm. He also doesn't deserve self-loathing and any no. or shame, but do you deserve a reward? Your freaking life has been a reward. You don't deserve a reward for what? Yeah. But the mind. Well, I was doing good. For, I figure at that point, I'll be down 40 pounds. I deserve to go to Sturgis and put on 10. <laughs> or you can reward yourself by not going, taking those four days and having a rapid uh, loss of 10 more and just trying to shift his mindset, man. It's difficult, though. Thoughts on that? Yeah, it's ex extremely difficult. Yeah. For sure. So does a guy deserve to go to Sturgis? You know, deserve. You know, I, I, the only thing he probably deserves is to make that decision himself. For sure. Right? And, and I encouraged him in that. You know what I but, mean? And you know, just, just, we're in this together. And, just, I, and I always tell him, I said, dude, I don't mean to piss you off. And if I'm ever overstepping my bounds, you tell me, but you asked me to come on board. Right. Yep. You asked me to give you full me. And, and so because he asked you, he deserves to also under, be told what the consequences of those decisions are going to be. Am I telling him something that's not true? No. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it is true. And we know it's true. So you can't live life and you can never. We're not in forever. We're in 2024. Mm -hmm. It's time right now. And you never know. I mean, hopefully that decision will be easier for him in 30 days. Yes. It gets, it gets easier. Yeah. But it also gets harder before it gets easier. Yeah. I really wanted to go to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I deserve to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Look what I've been through. Poor me. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I deserve to. And I've been pretty disciplined in this and this and this. And I deserve that. You know, because I know that what I'm trying to get done. I just described to you a little while ago what, who the beast is for me. Does going to the Super Bowl take me further away or closer to the beast? Takes me further away, doesn't it? Probably. Yeah. Well, because one of them was building wealth. Yep, uh, that's true. Right? So yeah. as I look at those categories, it's inarguable. It will take, now, sometimes I might make that exchange, but right now I'm in a mode of rapid acceleration. I told you I want to be unrecognizable. Unrecognizable means I have to do way different. So I didn't go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go. I can afford to go, quote, quote, quote. Mm -hmm. Didn't go. You'd only spent one-tenth of uh, what Blake Lively paid for the jewelry she was wearing. That doesn't bother me. I know me either, but have, have you seen that somebody no. itemized no. every single one of her and most of them are uh, above 50, 50 grand and there's like 20 of them. Good for her. Uh-huh. I have no, I don't begrudge that. Me either. People are like, Kelsey paid a million dollars for that suite. Okay. So he made that that day. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a push for him. Come for on. his family. People are funny, man. And who wouldn't sacrifice a day <laughs> for their family for a right. suite like that? Let's say you make $500 a day. Would you spend $500? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's all relative money. and People have a hard time well, yeah. understanding. I mean, I don't. I don't know what that would be like. But I can understand that if you make 1000 a day and you spend 1000 on your family, you've worked a day to spend that. Mm -hmm. Good on him. Seems like a bargain. <laughs> for him, maybe. Um. So we got out of order here. I already did that. Um, you want to play a video? Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah. So you want me to set it up? Yeah. So this is four minutes of impact is kind of what I refer to this as. This is from the Bedros Koulian show. He's got a podcast, YouTube. Um, what he's done is he's just, he's discussing, he finished a book by a dude named Howard Wasden. It, amazing read. Dude was in SEAL Team 6. Um, so Bedro says, he, it's one of my favorite lines. He says, fitness is the gateway drug to the higher self. Let's go. And in business. Now, remember I said in his book, Howard Wozniak talked about prioritizing as SEALs, as warriors, they prioritize what they're going to do on their mission, right? 
Everything can't be a priority. So you got to say, okay, this is a top priority. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. And I realized, all right, well, I don't have a lot of control right now. And so I'm, as I'm reading this book, I realized the highest priority that I have right now is getting myself back in shape. Why? Because it is the only thing I have 100% control over. Didn't have any control on the home front, right? I can control what I do from that point forward, but I don't know how my wife would feel. I didn't have any control in terms of the business side of things. Not finite, immediate control where I could flip a lever, lever and, and get a result. So I found myself saying, well, what is the thing that I have the highest level of control over? My fitness. All right, fat boy, get fit again. Because that I can control. I can decide how many times a week I work out. I can decide how I eat. I can decide how intense my workouts are. I can decide exactly what I'm going to do to build the muscle, burn the fat, and no one's gonna stop me. There is no secondary person that's gonna make a decision where my fitness is concerned. It's all me. And there isn't a delay in terms of making a decision and then seeing the outcome later, like there is in business. Because you know this, you can walk into the gym, have an awesome workout for 45 minutes, walk out feeling like you're the fucking king of the world, right? Like that is amazing. Then in 45 minutes, you completely changed how you feel, how you think, how you process. You gave yourself hope. And so every day, I continue to work on my fitness while I also worked on my business. And by stacking that confidence, those wins in the gym, as the scale went down in weight, as the strength and endurance went up in the gym, as my body got leaner, as I changed my shape and got wider shoulders, wider back and narrower waist again, I started to feel a sense of great hope in just a matter of 30 days. And so when I'm up your ass telling you that if you are in a rock bottom place in life, all the chips are down, you don't know what to do. And you go, why does B constantly say, get your ass in shape? Because fitness is the gateway drug to the higher self. When you start working out, you immediately start releasing dopamines and endorphins. You start feeling better. You start feeling hopeful. And when you feel hopeful, you can ride that wave after that workout into your work. It's no coincidence that some of my best workouts have led to some of my best business ideas. It's no coincidence that some of my best workouts have led to my, some of my best business decisions. It is no coincidence that some of my best workouts have led to some of my best podcast episodes. The reason for that is because when you're working out, you have absolute control. You put that phone away, you come in there with a plan of attack, you had your coffee, you had your protein, you had your oatmeal ahead of time, and you attack that workout like a motherfucker. <laughs> what do you think? Perfect. Yeah, it's truth, right? Yeah, I was actually thinking the entire time that uh, when uh, it's rest days that I that I struggle with the sugar. Yeah, because you know, I work after a workout, uh, and then if, especially if I you know eat eat protein right after that, I, I'm satiated for the entire day. Yeah, and and it does. I, I have a much better day at work. I fall asleep easier yeah. at the end of the day. So rest days are the problem. Yeah, I've been very much limiting those. So since January 1st, I should have gotten this exact number, but it's pretty easy to figure. I believe today was my, I did after the deaf reset, I took like three days and did nothing. Um, well, I did Just stretched and that kind yep. of stuff. Maybe went for a walk, but not like lifting and stuff. I think I've taken five rest days in 2024. Okay. And so- I think I'm at- nine it's funny because well that's too much and you should only but it's not i'm not down there every day just crushing my chest or whatever mm -hmm. so some days it's uh, some band work 
right? And some flexibility work and some ab work, some stretching. And some days it's really, really lifting heavy. Some days it's a walk and a, and a sauna. It's, but there's movement every day mm-hmm. and, I'm, and I'm forcing myself to take limited rest days. The talk I was having with the dude I mentioned earlier that I'm coaching, uh, he talked about that, you know, I don't want to go too hard at times because, you know, I don't want to hurt myself. And I know I said, okay. And I think that's reasonable. But what you believe in your mind is as far as you can go isn't even close. Right. And he recognized that. He says, yeah, I think it's like 40% of what we're really capable of. I said, so you can do more. Um, and so we have some things on the books to where, okay, we're going to schedule some outdoor walks and we're going to, and we're going to start bringing some physicality into the coaching. That reminds me, I, d- I don't remember who it was, but uh, I saw a guy talking about um, women working out and the, um, the don't work, you know, don't lift weights as a woman because you're, you'll get you're too bulky. bulky. You get too bulky. And he was like, the arrogance. Do you know how hard I have to work yeah. to put on just a pound of muscle? Yep. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just, uh, that, uh, that always struck me. I was like, that's true. Check out Jamie Seaman. All of you ladies out there who don't want to get bulked up. Dr. Fit and Fabulous. Fit and Fabulous? Yeah. Down there. Uh, go. Yeah. So that's Jamie Seaman. Oh, yeah. She's, in, she's from Omaha. She was on the Titan Games rocks thing. Um, she was Mrs. Nebraska. Um, yeah, so check out her stuff. She's got a great podcast as well, but that's what lifting weights will get you, ladies. Mm-hmm. Jacked. Yeah. Don't want to be that. Come on. <laughs> Especially as we get older, we got to start moving weight. We've got to put muscle on our frames. So I thought the clip was good. I like that guy. I encourage you guys to check out B. Dross. He's a good dude. So, you know, I think 2024 is going to be a little bit challenging for us. Right. Uh, election year, border crisis multiple front world war economic woes on the horizon so this tribe starting with me needs to make a serious commitment to becoming the beast we owe it to ourselves we owe it to the rest of the tribe we owe it to our families there's really no more time to waste now let's say that i'm just a doomsday tin foil hat freaking weirdo okay you are okay (laughs) <laughs> and that we get to January of 25 and everything was smooth. Mm-hmm. Man, this is the best that America has been in the last decade. And the, the election went smoothly. The economy, oh. inflation's dropped. And you, every, wow, the kind of wokeness is kind of going away and people are treating each other with respect. And I can't believe it. Let's just give me, I'll give you that. Okay. So we're back to this utopia in America, right? It's just amazing. So what's the worst that happens? You get to there and you get to live in that utopia as the beast. Mm -hmm. You've spent this entire time micro dosing adversity and preparing for whatever might come and it doesn't happen. The worst that happens is you're the best version of yourself to live in the, in peace. (laughs) Okay. That do that. I don't think that's going to happen, but that'd be great. I also want to say, I hope that's the case. You're right. I'm not wishing or hoping for any of the crazy I just think it's probably a little bit inevitable, but largely because of the election. I just mm-hmm. think that it's, they're going to push too far. Like both sides. Agreed. Yeah. So I have a couple finishing thoughts. Be willing to do what others won't, and you'll have a life that others don't. I've heard versions of that different mm-hmm. ways, but how true is that? If we want to have a life that other people don't, we have to do what other people won't. It just seems to make sense. Another topic that came up yesterday um, was balance. So I got to thinking of balance. So kind of the, I was thinking of the scales. Isn't that on the list of stupid things? It is. You know what we forgot? So guys, (laughs) if you haven't listened to the last two weeks episodes with Misty Dew, go back and check them out. I forgot to To bring bring up up the the list. list. Oh yeah. So Misty has a mental list of (laughs) things that I've told her over the last decade that are stupid. Put that on the list, dude. She's like, got it. She's never written anything down, but you know what? She can recite it. Yes, she can. She's a 
freaking animal. <laughs> uh, so those are must listens. Go back and check out mm. do. <laughs> um, I don't even remember where I was going with this. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just tried to check. <laughs> to- totally forgot. Uh, in or- oh, in balance. Order- yes. I was talking about balance. So I was thinking of the scales, right? So the thing with the weight right in the middle, there's balance, mm-hmm. right? Right in the middle, nothing is getting done. Everybody's in the middle, wants to be in the middle. I have no desire for balance. <laughs> I want to be way on the other side. I want to be so freaking unbalanced towards the beast mm-hmm. and make unreasonable decisions and live a life that's set apart that other people can't imagine and microdose adversity and get up three hours before the sun and go running or go walking and lift weights and do two a days and not drink alcohol, drink a gallon of water a day, not eat sweets and become unrecognizable. I'm going to do that stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm going to push myself beyond what I think I can do. There's no balance in that life. Well, you deserve some time off. Why? Why? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I'm not even telling you I'm right. I'm just telling you it's me. Yeah. I have, I'm not about balance. I'm about winning. Mm-hmm. Not being better than you, better than that person, being my best. And people that are going to resonate with what I'm trying to get done here and building a tribe, they're going to be like, yeah, I've been listening. I've been waiting for this. This is what I've been looking for. A guy that's that extreme that can help me be that extreme. Mm -hmm. I'm that guy. You found your freaking weirdo. Yes. (laughs) Right? Oh, yeah. You live it. I do. Every day. And I'm going to become unrecognizable. It's going (laughs) to be really fun. There's going to be no balance in it. It'd be boiling the frog with me. So I'll always recognize you. Correct. Yes. Because <laughs> I see us so much. Yes. <laughs> For other people, though? Yes. That's the idea. Um, you Love know, it. You know Goggins? Of course. I like David Goggins. And you know what? I, for people who haven't seen you in a year, you, you're unrecognizable to them at this point. All right. So I'm going to pat myself on the back. Okay. Ready? So I went to the chiropractor yesterday. Haven't been to the chiropractor. I had him look up the last time I was there. Mid-December. So a couple months. Mm-hmm. And so I'm in that little waiting area and he comes out and says, okay, Jim, you're next. And I stood up. He instantly takes a couple steps back. Now, let me preface this. And this is going to sound weird. I really like my chiropractor. This guy's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's super fit and really put together. Former athlete. Um, he's like 6'3 and, and ripped. And a lot of chiropractors are pretty put together. This dude's one of them. Yes. Um, soon as I stand up, he takes a couple steps back and he goes, well, what happened to you? I said, what do you mean? He says, hitting the weights a little bit? He says, I've never seen you look like this. And I'm like, okay. Thank dude, you. Thank you. And I told him honestly, I said, man, I got to be honest with you, man. I need some freaking encouragement today. <laughs> This is perfect. This is going to be better for me than the adjustment. Mm -hmm. But thank you for that. That stuff makes you feel good. That propels me. Last night helped me make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Right. Right. Hey, there's that cake. That'd be good. Eh, You know what? Not doing that. Right. JP told me I put together. Um, Sheber Chiropractic, 120th and Pacific. For those in the metro area, the best in the business. Um, But he's a good dude, and I appreciated that. So Goggins. This morning, I'm going through a lot of stuff, and I found some Goggins. I love Goggins. Check out his books. He also pretty extreme. Oh, yeah. Right? And a lot of people, they hate Goggins. (laughs) He says, you're not going to find greatness by looking in a book or by listening to me. I may give you a spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. Again, there's some self stuff in there that I'll get beat up about. You got to go inside yourself and find that stuff. Mm -hmm. You can have a coach, you can have encouragement, but you got to go inside you and ask yourself what's important. It's not for me to tell you. It's not for me to tell the listeners. I'm telling me, I know what's important to me. I'm freaking all in, dude. I am all in. You got to go inside yourself to find it. It's good. Anything else you want to talk about? No, this is good. Yeah? I guess it's just time to encourage people to get at it. For sure. All right. See you next week. <laughs>